<laughs> Hi there, today's video I'm going to explain how to optimize parameter settings for the uh, CTrader grid hedge trading system. Um, so when you come into CTrader, you'll probably just see a view like this. You need to go to the automate tab, bottom left. And the auto automate tab is where you're going to be doing your automated trading or running back tests and things like this. So this is the window you're going to use for back test and optimization. Um, the first thing you want to do is obviously add a CBOT instance here, as I've got here for the CAD JPY. And if you're using Forex, I would probably um, just load up, find, pick your symbol that you want to trade with. But before you do, load up a symbol that works quite good. You've already got half decent sense for it. So that'll give you a rough idea because some of the settings is almost the same for all, all Forex symbols. So you just load in the settings there. So I've got one here, CAD JPY, load that in. Um, go to your backtest dates. I'm just going to do a one-year backtest. Go into your backtest settings. We all do all our, we do all our backtests on about £1,000 um, or dollars or whatever. So it's a very small account balance. So you get a realistic view of most traders don't have £10,000 in their account. Um, we just leave the standard parameters here. Um, if you've got a more powerful machine or more time, you can choose tick data instead of one-minute bars. But we find one-minute bars is good enough. Um, choose your commission for the symbol. The actual live spread is one4 Click on there. Then once you've done that, you've got your start and end dates for the back test, which is the 21st of the 6th, 2019 to the 2nd of the 7th. Actually, I'm going to push it all the way across there to the 8th of the 7th. Run the back test for that. That will run a back test. Um, if you click on the equity chart window at the bottom there and just bring it up, you'll see it's running now. The back test is running for this um, currency symbol. Now, what we've got, if we've got another um, video I think we did a video, I'm not sure. There's another article anyway that explains about having more trades or less trades. Now, this, these settings only give 25 trades in one year. It's not a lot of trades. But the, the thing is, it's the end result. So at the end of a year, it's how much net profit you've made, not how many trades have opened. We find that if you have more trades, you tend to have a bigger drawdown, more risk, more commissions, more fees. So it doesn't really matter how many trades open up. And if you're somebody who wants to sit there and look at trades opening all the time, you've already failed in this industry. It's not about that. It's about opening at the right time and closing at the right time. So this comes across now and just shows you um, the settings for CAD JPY. Now, for example, if I wanted to change this to another symbol, say I want to use GBP USD. Now, if I run a back test for that, Oh, before I do, I've got to make sure I do the right um, spread. So now the spread has changed from 1.5 to 0.4. And then I'll run a back test. Now you'll see the results won't be as good. They'll be way off, or they should be anyway. Um, but some of the parameters should be you know, somewhere close. So the idea now is to actually find the best settings for this. Actually, it's coming back all right. I was, I was hoping it wouldn't, actually. Um, so it's a totally different currency symbol. It's come back at 12% net profit with a 2.35% uh, drawdown, which is very good, actually. I'm going to save that because that's, that's not bad. Um, it's only 16 trades, but that's not a bad settings there. I'm going to save that for the um, smart grid. OK, let's try another one, and hopefully it will come back with bad results. Euro GBP. And again, I go up to here, change it to 0.6 spread, run the back test on that, hoping this comes back as poor results. Um, and at least then I can show you how to do optimization to make them better. OK, OK, so it's not coming back with any. Oh, it's coming back with some. It's very opens very few trades. OK, this isn't so great. So, for example, if I want more trades. OK, so if, for example, that I don't want just nine or ten trades, I want a lot more trades. We have got a, an article in our knowledge base that explains how to do this, and I'll show you it now. So say I want 200 trades in a year or 300, but I also want a half decent um, net profit at the end of it and a low drawdown. So a drawdown is the amount of um, equity or capital that you've got at risk at any time um, that you're exposed as the um, as the trading is going on. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is just show you all the parameters. So this is the bit that you probably be, want to be interested in. How do you go about optimizing all of these parameters? So I'm going to go to the optimization window. I'm also going to do it as a one year optimization because the idea is optimize it um, for one year of backtest data and then every month or every whenever you want to do it, re backtest to see if you're still getting Good performance on fresh data. If you're starting to see fresh data have bad performance, run a optimization again. Now this is data fitting, I must admit, but there are some um, settings that are definitely useful to, for data fitting, which is some of your indicator settings. So what I'll do is I'll go to again 
uh, I've got 18th of the 6th to the 2nd of the 7th, yeah? I want to run a optimization for that one year of backtest data, or sorry, backtest data, one year of data, and how do I go about do it? First of all, you set your backtest settings. So if you don't do this properly, you won't get decent results. So I'm going to set it as a 1,000, 1, um, in this case, it's euros, actually, 1,000 euros starting balance. I've got my commission. I'm just doing one, one bar data, and I've got my life spread. Okay, so that's my backtest settings correct now. Now I'm going to go here, which is the important thing, or CBOT parameters. Now, if you open up this, it's a pity that CTrader don't allow you to drag this down to see it better, okay? I'm going to move this window over to, to the right so I can see it better. Now, you'll see what parameters. You don't really want to be running a back test with all of them checked, because if you do, you'll be waiting for weeks. It will take so long, and you're not necessarily going to get the best settings. So what you do is you optimize in sections. So the first thing you do is you get half decent results using um, settings that you've probably got previously for a currency symbol. Um, try and find one that you've done previously that's got half decent settings, and then you just want to improve on that. So you're, you've already made a step forward. So first of all, we'll leave the time frame doesn't matter with this. Just leave it unchecked. You really don't need the time frame. Um, you include, you include buy, oops, include buy and sell. Now, what I'm going to do first of all is uncheck everything, and I'm going to get the DNAPLI settings correct first. So, and also you might notice you want to use the same settings that you've loaded in on your parameter. Now, in this case, you'll notice that when you go into your optimization, this is important, CTrader don't use your default settings that you've loaded into that CBOT set into your CBOT parameters for your optimization. I'll explain this now. If you look at grid settings, it's got a grid distance of five. Here, it's got three. So you need to go through and update all these values, multiplier of two. And the reason is, when it does an optimization, it's already got a head start because the settings are already half there. You've already got, you know, because we've loaded in a previous data set that's quite good. So go through all of them and add them all in. So I'm not actually going to run the back test because it will take too long. Um, but the idea is go through all of the settings that you've got over here for your CBOT parameters that you've just loaded in and put them in for your CBOT parameter settings there and make sure everything is unchecked. So I'm going to uncheck everything. So this is assuming as well that I've actually done all of this. OK, I'm going to uncheck everything in there. I'm going to leave the DiNapoli on, actually, and get rid of the whole moving average. Now, I've turned everything off, especially trading hours and stuff like that, and it will have the same settings as you got on the right hand side there. Now, if I scroll down, the first thing I want to do is get the best DiNapoli stochastic settings for this trading system. These that indicator is probably the most important indicator for this trading system, especially the um, where is it? The crossover distance, this value is very important. OK, leave your time frame at one hour for now because we find that's pretty good. But you can change it to anything you want. If you've got a different time frame, then use that. Um, I'm going to turn off the confirmation time frame. So what I'm going to optimize if I was to run is the fast, slow, uh, the K, K and D, the values for the stochastic crossover distance between one and ten. You leave it as step one. Now, the lower and upper thresholds, yes, I want to go from 20 to 30 and 70 to 80. Now, you could go higher if you want. Now, what you would do now, you're only going to optimize now the DiNapoli stochastic settings. So if I was to press play, it's going to go ahead now and I'll do auto select. Now, I'm not going to run this completely because I want to show you some other steps. But what this will do, this will run optimization. Um, I'm not sure how long it will take. It might even still take four or five hours. But once it's finished, it's going to give you the correct settings for your DiNapoli stochastic for that currency symbol. And those settings is what you want for this date range that we've used. Obviously, with different date ranges, it will vary. Um, so when this value starts coming back, if I don't get anything up on the screen in a minute, I'll stop it. When the values start coming back, you'll see a list of the parameters on the right hand side. So it's come up with one there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop this now. Actually, it's not bad. We just increase this. OK, so what it's going to do, it's going to step through now and it's going to try and find the best settings. Now, this gray line you see here dragging down, that's drawdown. That's nasty. You don't want that. You want it really like here. You want it so it's very little drawdown the whole way up. So this will run now and find the right settings. Here's a three hours, 55 minutes. I was roughly right. So once you've found the settings that you want to use, you just click apply there. OK. Now that will apply, ignore the fact that it's changed because um, we've got different settings that I didn't go through and update all the settings. It would have only updated your DiNapoli settings, which is here. It would have found the correct settings 
for your currency symbol with your Denapoli. Now, once you've got that, you want to then save your settings. So just click there and save your settings somewhere to back it up. Constantly back up your settings just in case uh, for some reason C Trader crashes or something happens you, and you've done hours and hours of optimization. So regularly back up your settings that you've got from your parameters. So now what we've done now is first step is we've got some settings from a previous symbol that were pretty good. Then we've then um, used those in the optimization. Then we've gone and found the best Denapoli stochastic settings for this symbol. Now the next step is to go back in. Now we have the Denapoli settings. We just uncheck them now because we've got them. And make sure the values in here are the same as the values that you've just got optimized. Okay, so the next step is I would probably go and do the grid distance. That's quite an important one to do. So my second step, I would do grid distance. And I would just do one to 10. And I wouldn't do volume multiplier. I'd leave that always at one. Volume multiplier just means it's your, it's, it's actually explained, I won't go into it into detail, but what it means is if you've got it as one and you've got good results, you can just increment it and you'll get even better results. So you do not need to optimize the volume multiplier. Just leave it at one to start and then you can put it to two or three or 1.5, whatever later on to get higher results. So then you would do that and you'd run a back test again. And then once it's got the best settings, you just apply those settings and you'll see that your volume multiplier, sorry, the grid distance, the, the, the correct grid distance for this trading system will come up there. <clears throat> okay, once you've done that, you've then got to go to, um, I would do, I would near miss all of these, max spread, max slippage, max lose and trades. You can do those manually. Um, I would probably look at something like your trailing stop if you're using it. So if you're using a trailing stop, I would do a trailing stop, a trigger between say five and um, 25 and I would do step um, anywhere between 2 and 15. Then I would run a back an optimization again just to find the, the best trailing stop values. Once you've done that, if you are using break even or you want to use break even, you can do the same for break even. But I would only have trailing stop or break even. I wouldn't necessarily use both of them. I would leave your news manager off. Now, for example, if you ever see um, parts in your trade, if you ever see areas where there's drawdown even at the end of it. If you click on the gray area with your mouse and you see large spikes, that's a news release. There's a high probability that's a news release. So if you're using the news release manager, you should be able to reduce the drawdown even more than what you see in your back test. It's just that with CTrader, you cannot factor in um, news releases when you're doing um, back testing, unfortunately. Okay, so once you've got that one, I would then go to something like um, HMA settings. So if you are using whole mount moving average, I would try and optimize those as well to try and find the best whole, whole moving average settings. If that gives you better setting, uh, better results, keep them. If it doesn't, leave it switched off and just use the Denapoli. Um, again, I would do um, trading hours. If you're using um, indices or shares, I'll definitely look at trading hours. <clears throat> don't do account protection. You don't need that. That's something you can do manually. Price levels, this is something you'll do manually anyway because you'll see major support and resistance levels. So leave that one completely out. Do not optimize that. Um, take profit, yes, you can. You can find the, leave that automatic, yes. And you can find the fixed take profit value, the perfect take profit value. But you're also using a trailing stop. So you don't really need that unless you don't use a trailing stop and you use this. The average take profit, again, you can find the average take profit. Um, and also you can do max losing and max winning trades um, and max trades open. You can do that separately. By doing all this individually, um, you're going to be able to find really good settings really fast. Um, I think it's a better way of doing it. And also you can keep saving your settings as you're going along. And then if you want to, for example, find what your best, um, how many trades open should you have at any time, you just optimize just this one value. So it's better to do this to optimize in little steps and little bits than it is to try and optimize the whole thing. And you should be able to do that even on a not so powerful machine. Okay, so one other thing I'm gonna tell you about if you're not too bored, which is probably very, very important. And I've already done another video. I think I've done a video or it's actually in the knowledge base. I might show you that. It's optimization criteria. Now as default, CTrader puts in maximize winning trades. Okay. This is what you'll see when you first go into C Trader. Now, what that will do, see, if you look at the bottom here, that did an optimization and it's got 680 trades in one year. That's a lot of trades. Um, so if you do want more trades and you want a lot of trades, you might suffer from a bit more drawdown and maybe not so much profit. I don't know. I would leave the winning trades there. 
If on the other hand, you want settings like I showed you previously, which is maybe only 20 or 30 trades a year, but low drawdown, um, then I would click X, get rid of that. And I would do optimization, optimization criteria of just net profit and net max equity drawdown. Okay, minimize max equity drawdown. So I would just do that. And if you did that, you would probably get um, good results, but very few trades. But I know some people out there want lots of trades. I don't know why. Okay, that's it. That's all I want to show you on this video. It's for the smart grid. If you want to optimize your own settings, this is what you do. Um, again, leave it a genetic algorithm. And here you can put the CPU as fast as possible. If you're using a dedicated server like we do, and you're not going to use it for anything else, put it on 100%. If you're using a PC desktop and you're actually doing other work at the same time, bring the CPU down, but that's going to make it run super slow. Okay, um, if you are still getting problems and you still cannot optimize your settings and you're stuck, um, we, we do offer a service. Um, it's a paid service. You can go to our website and find it and we'll optimize, we'll find optimized parameters for your symbol for you. That's the video. If you do like it, give me a please give me a thumbs up at the bottom. If you're not familiar who we are, just go to clickalgo.com. Um, I'll just quickly show you um, before I disappear. If you do want to go and you don't do know who I am, just disappear quickly now. It's got to hide my bookmarks. Hold on a sec. Dunk. So um, when this loads in a minute. Okay, so this is us. We are clickalgo.com. We specialize in C Trader trading platform. Um, and we've got a YouTube channel dedicated to C-Trader and you can come and subscribe to us and find out more information. And we've got lots of tools and products for C-Trader. Okay, don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Thank you very much.